Hello and welcome to Loading Screen Simulator. I mean, uh, Heat. Heat, yeah, Heat. That, that's the name. Yeah. Um, this is a new game by Code Hatch, um, which is set in the West or the Wild West era and theme. However, a word of warning or disclaimer this game is. An early alpha uh, that's, that's been released and it's very poorly optimized, it's very buggy, and also it's developed by Code Hatch, which are not exactly known for. Well, they, they don't exactly have a very good reputation, especially since Reign of King, uh, Reign of Kings. Uh, just to get a bit of a taste, um, it took me about Two hours to actually start this recording, or I started a few other recordings, but um, this recording is like I think the third attempt, and about the twentieth time I've tried to connect to a server, and so I've had to go on a server which I've previously already been on, so I've got a little bit of stuff already because simply the others weren't working, it was buggy, I had multiple models and I could steer one of them which was moving away from my camera and it was really strange. Anyway, so that as a word of warning, it's very early in its development cycle, so it's very buggy. It's not very well optimized, meaning um, it draws about anywhere between 5 to 11 uh, gigabytes of RAM, or at least uh, for me it's been doing that right now, it's got about 10.2 gigabytes of RAM. It's very intensive on your hard drive, uh, so I would advise you to use an SSD, even though you can use an HDD, uh, especially if you don't want this game to be loading screen simulator. Um, it's quite demanding on your GPU as well, but if you uh, take down the settings a lot, you'll be fine, even possibly change to 720p. Um, and there are just like a few options which you can take down, like ray tracing, or well, I think it's ray trace shadows. Yeah, ray trace shadows, if you take that out, uh, I think that helps a lot. Uh, turn your ambient occlusion quality down, um, motion blur off, obviously, blue. Um, and just basically take out uh, incrementally things until it works for you. If I can get it running with a GTX 860M, you should be able to get it running with about everything that has a graphics card which is more or less decent. Yeah, anyway, as soon as you finally made it into the game, this is more or less what you'll be greeted with. You'll have this strange stick with a bang on it. It's probably the best part of the game is the physics of the hobo stick, um, but you can treat this about as you would the stone from Rust, if you remember that. Um, and it's basically the only thing that you spawn with in the middle of the map, or at some point in the map, and you'll just have to go from there. The stick can be used to gather just about everything, um, but it's not exactly efficient. So, for instance, I can just hit the fucking ground with it. And as you can see, from hitting the ground, I've picked up hay, sticks, and fiber. You can also hit fallen trees and trees with the hobo stick to gather uh, sticks and wood. If it should decide to start working, there we go. Sometimes if you don't actually hit it itself, but hit the ground next to it, so you can get some other resources. Alright, after you've gathered your first bit of resources, what you can do is you can go into your inventory with the tab, and you can have a little bit of a look at these sort of things you can craft in the section called blueprints. And one of the first things that I would advise you to make is some tools. Um, initially you'll have unlocked the stone hatchet, the stone pickaxe, and the wood club. You'll need some wood, stone and fiber for the hatchet. 
and some wood and some stone for the stone pickaxe. Alright, and then as well, I would just advise you in case you uh, meet some other players which aren't exactly friendly, or you meet some animals that you would like to kill, get yourself some arrows and a bow as well. Alright, that's after you've done that, you've basically got yourself your starting materials and starting tools and then you're ready to go. Uh, while you're just walking around, I do advise to actually just get out your hobo stick and literally just while you're walking around, just hit the ground and oftentimes you can gather some resources while doing this. Uh, apart from wood and uh, stone and the like, there are also resources like flowers, common flowers as you can see. But there are also things which you can uh, pick up, you don't have to destroy them with your hobo set. For instance here, by holding E, I can gather a lark spur, if I pronounce that correctly. Additionally, there will be other things like, for instance, this poppy, which can be used in crafting. And you should also see some mushrooms lying around and these mushrooms are especially important in the beginning uh, because they will give you a bit of food and a bit of water which will go down so you need to replenish that. Um, apart from that, um, in my opinion this game is quite a lot like ARK, at least the system by which it works is a lot like ARK, so in the bottom right you can see for instance I have a level up meter, it's the arrow, and then right next to that I have some status effects like for instance that I'm hungry, there's a hunger meter, there's also a water meter or a thirst meter, and if I should want to go replenish that water, all you have to do is go into the water. As I said, food is easiest to gather some mushrooms. If you want to eat it, you have to equip it in your hotbar, uh, toggle it, and then press the left mouse button to start eating it. And then you get a really just a tiny amount of food, but it's it's better than nothing, obviously. after you've gathered yourself a bit of resources obviously you will want to safeguard those resources you might want a place to respawn you might need some crafting uh, places for instance like the smithy or the crafting table or a campfire and to do that you probably don't just want to place them out in the open where people can take them so you will want to build yourself a base and the simple part of that is, in my opinion, also quite similar to any other survival game. You'll have to craft yourself an item by which you can place down foundations and other parts. So to do that, once again we go into town. And then right here we have a build planner, use place framework of buildings and then we have the wooden construction hammer which can be used to build, repair and upgrade or deconstruct structures. So we'll need to make ourselves a crafting planner first for which you'll need cotton and stick. As you can see crafting takes a bit of a while and while you're crafting you can't uh, you can always only craft one thing at a time. You'll have to wait while that is happening. Alright, for the building hammer I will need some more wood and for the building as well. So in my opinion the best way to get wood is to go to a fallen object or a fallen log 
rather than chopping a tree itself, because in my opinion that has just given me a little bit more resources than chopping a tree itself. As you can see there, I just got 9 wood, 4 wood, and uh, it's a lot more than chopping a tree itself. And you can also see in the top bar at the top, each of these tools does have um, a health bar, so it will get used up after a while. So you'll have to keep that in mind. Although it does seem like uh, that health bar is quite large, so it will take a while. Um, also, as you can see, you don't only have the constraints of your inventory, but you also, as far as I know, like an art, also have a bit of a weight constraint, so you can't just carry tons with you. For instance, I'm already at 251 pounds of 300. Alright, let's start crafting the hammer already, and continue gathering resources this time, for instance, from the tree. And as you can see, so far, not exactly a lot of wood from that. Like an arc, uh, if you would like to access your leveling system or your character, you have the P button, which you can use to access your character. Upon leveling up, you'll have a few points to spend, which you can invest in. For instance, increased weight capacity or for health and similar things, just like in arc. Show that by pressing B: health, nutrition, capacity, and hydration. Just increase my capacity a bit. And then, last, similar as in art, there is the ability to research new blueprints in order to make new items. To do that you will have to press the B button like blueprint. So I'll do that here, and as you can see, there is literally a ton of things that you can actually make or research. Especially in the interior, as you can see, a lot of things. A lot of these are obviously also just decorative. There's a lot. Then you have firearms as well. You have melee weapons, you have bows and throwing weapons, you even have guns, field cannons, and howitzers. There's a prisoner system as well, and there are uh, workstations which you can craft here, a tool research area for even farming things. Obviously, a bit of a uh, food one for um, baking things. Mostly, or just uh, general processing of goods. And there's also a medical. So, as you can see, there is really a very large potential with this game. We just have to make sure that that potential is actually met as well and not wasted like in the other games. Probably. You can even see here there's like a newborn blanket, diapers, so there'll probably also be a quite an interesting uh, concept for, for instance, family or people, slaves and the like. Um, and obviously there's also upgrade capacity uh, for upgrading your inventory space or carry capacity, I assume. However, you can also see this requires money. And we'll get to money as soon as we start building ourselves a base. Alright, I've now got a construction hammer and I've got a building panel. As you can see, 
when I equip it, uh, you have hold E to select structure and press E to change tool. Currently, the tool is set to snap build. You just have to find a spot to build. There's somebody else already building there. Let's see whether there's a claimed area. Some of this is already claimed, and we'll also have to be careful. Things work quite close to uh, the White House, if I remember correctly. But uh, just to show you how it works, let's select the structure. So let's start with a foundation, and we'll start with a foundation. And as you can see, that requires a lot of sticks. But that is generally, first of all, how it works. Then the next structure I could make is, for instance, a wall. We'll just start with a one by one. And as you can see, I need a lot more sticks for that. So the easiest way I've found is to take out your hobo stick and start working the ground where you can see some sticks. That will have the added benefit of also getting you some fiber. Uh, while I'm trying to gather some sticks, it's probably a good time to start talking about the money. Um, money, of course, has its normal use, it can be used for buying and selling things, what a surprise, but it is also, as you saw, quite important for research, and it actually requires quite a bit of money, as you saw, and there is a third use for it, and that use is actually in building or actually claiming. Most games have a system by which uh, when you build a base you will basically have to pay upkeep for it. Uh, in Rust, for instance, you do that by uh, supplying resources. In Earth World, you do that by supplying amber. But in this game, that is money. So if you put down a land claim, you will have to pay taxes basically. And those taxes are money which you'll have to put inside of the land claim to make sure that that land actually stays claimed to you and you. Right, let's see how many sticks we've got. 92. Still not a lot. And now you may ask how do I actually get wood? Uh, not wood. How do I actually get money? The easiest way that I have found so far is actually by getting yourself an item which is called the shipping bin. And into the shipping bin, you can then put items and then sell them there. Um, it will have a shipping cost, but you'll get some money out of that. It actually requires 130 wood, so that's quite a bit, but that's how you get your money easiest. It may be the only way. I don't actually know that right now. Maybe there's also a way to get some inside of towns. I'm not sure about that yet, but I haven't seen it yet. Um, at this bin, you can only actually sell things, but you can also buy things. So it's basically like your own personal shop that you can use to buy and sell things. Right, as you 
can see from while gathering I have also leveled up. And as you can see for my one level up, I have one point which I'll just put into further carrying capacity. So that I can gather some more material. Alright, let's just put our plan again. And we shall make a doorway. See, it takes a while to actually build until completion, and then let's check whether we can make some more foundations, depending on how many sticks we still have. seems like we don't have enough because that actually takes quite a bit of sticks so I'll have to continue finding some more sticks. So well, as you can see this game does take a lot of resources to gather. Now anyway while I'm doing that I can talk a little bit. If you would actually like to see me doing some more of this kind of content as not only guys or you would like to in general see more of this game but rather some more guides instead of just gameplay um, you can write that or I would enjoy it if you wrote that in the comments so that I know how to continue on with this game um, and deliver what you guys want. So to fill some empty space, this game does have a day-night cycle. So, um, be aware that in the night it actually gets quite dark, and if you don't take out your torch, you actually you seriously can't see anything. I could see absolutely nothing at all, which means that during the night usually you probably won't be doing too much. Um, also be aware that this game does have the tendency to crash quite a lot. Um, similar as in other survival games such as Rust or Hurt World, um, when you log off in this game, your character will stay on the server. Uh, you'll actually go into a bit of a pose which looks like you're in a bed or a sleeping bag and in that pose you can obviously still get killed by other people and those people who take your stuff away. So be aware of that. Building a base is also important for making sure that when you log off your stuff is actually secure and nobody else to take it away from you. lost my base yet. Let's see how many sticks we have. 223. Still not a lot. But we'll try to at least get ourselves a second uh, foundation build. And then we can see whether we can also get some walls in. One, two, three, as you can see it snaps quite wonderfully, and that's about all we can make. So, it's back to Hobo Farming Simulator from now. Um, 
also uh, while hitting the ground, you might actually want to look a little bit what's actually on the ground, since depending what kind of graph you do actually see on the ground, you'll get different kinds of things. So if there's sticks on the ground, you'll get sticks, obviously, if you can see some stones back here, you'll get some stone. If there's flowers, you'll get flowers, if there's grass, you'll get grass and so on and so forth. But there's also things like some seed for farming later. You might get some copper as well. Just things to look out for. Um, as an art, this game does also have tameable animals. And for them, you will also need saddles. However, I do have to admit, my, admit myself, so far, I haven't actually seen any. Seems also like some of the big trees don't want to really fall over yet with the current small hatchet that I have. So we'll have to focus on the ones that are either, either quite small or already falling on the ground. As you can see, sometimes it's quite tricky to actually hit the right part so that you actually get the wood and not the surrounding things. I'm not only gathering some sticks but also some wood, which I'll probably also need for building and I'll need for uh, making that delivery bin and also some workstations. So it's mm. not a waste anyway. I'll just have to make sure that I can still find my base afterwards since I've already invested quite a few sticks into it. And after I've done that, I'll hopefully be able to get some stations up and running so that I can actually uh, make some better tools so that this gathering doesn't take forever. To see where I am. Actually, that should be the right direction. Indeed, that is the right direction. But I am unfortunately already overweighted. So I'll make the shipping bin. Hopefully that should reduce my weight a little bit already. And I'll get, gather some cotton while I'm at it. Uh, as you can see right there, there's some muffins there, which are quite important. This is going to help. Right here is actually a poisonous muffin. They're usually red but it will tell you that it's poisonous. Um, but you might be able to sell it, so it's probably worth picking up anyway. Unless of course it's being as fidgety as it is right now, and these are the actual real mushrooms, which you'll need to at least initially sustain yourself. As soon as you have a bit of a cash flow, you can probably also just buy some, which is a lot easier. Sometimes the mushrooms on so you can't reach them properly, but that's just the way it is. Oh, come on. Yeah, there you go. Alright. Also, take into account that you actually have to hold, not, um, not just, uh, pack it track. Alright, so, then I can equip it into my inventory, uh, into my hotbar side. Press the corresponding button and hold the left button for to start eating. And as you can see, that really just doesn't turn me up a lot. But as I haven't been seeing any animals yet, it's the best I can have for me. 
as you can see in the bottom left as well, the system of the president or becoming president is or seems to be already implemented in the game as you can see. Um, as far as I know, the way currently of becoming president is by killing the current president and then I think like in the of Kings, you have to sit in his chair. So it's not exactly very democratic. I mean, you'd expect from a president, but oh well, that's probably just a game mechanic. Maybe, maybe in the future, they will actually change it to something where you can actually uh, elect a president. So that president can probably still be assassinated, meaning a new president would have to be elected, but uh, I would find that quite an interesting proposition. And then you could obviously have other positions uh, which are actually uh, obtained by killing other people for it. But uh, president just seems to me like a position which should be built democratically, not by just killing somebody else, because then you're not really a president, then you're a dictator. Alright, it seems like I've actually done it now, I've lost my base, <sighs> which is rather important, should be somewhere here, it has to be somewhere here. And the others, no, it can't be the other side. So as you can see right there, there's the uh, monument, which means that the uh, White House is over there as well, as far as I know. And over there, you also have a city. In that city, there are NPCs. Um, but uh, as far as I've seen, those don't actually have a proper use yet. Anyway, since I can't find the base right now, I think I'll end the episode here and see you at the base or at a new base in the next episode. Um, I hope you've enjoyed. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to post them in the comments. Um, if you have any other inspirations or general comments, please do comment. And um, especially if uh, you would like to comment whether you would want this series to continue, please definitely voice your opinion in the comments. Also, of course, voice them if you don't want them to continue and want me to go back more to making guides. Anyway, have a nice day, and I hope to see you in the next video.